two things on today's show, both of which deal with sequences and series. I am not going to do two full free response questions in our time together because that's just silly. But what I will do is I want to take a look at this big idea, and I picked that big idea from 2001's question number six. And then I want to take a look at this big idea out of 2007's BC question number six. You will notice that they're all questions number six. If you do a search for Taylor series BC questions, they're either going to be question threes, which would have been the hardest question in the active section, or much more likely question sixes the hardest question in the inactive section. So after you've been in the room for four hours, this is what you get. Four hours. This is what you get. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to make sure we all remember how to find an interval of convergence for a power series. Now, a power series is nothing more than an infinitely long polynomial. It's an infinitely long polynomial. Every one of these terms is a monomial term. And they even went ahead and gave you the general term. This thing is the general term. And so I want to find the interval of convergence. And that comes through a song. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. If the limit is n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the n plus 1 term over the nth term. It's almost catchy. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. It's the limit as n approaches infinity to the absolute value of the n plus one term over the nth term. So at the risk of embarrassing myself, what's the n plus one term? That's the n plus 1th term. We're going to divide by the nth term. And if we divide by the nth term, then we're going to do a copy change flip. Credit to Mr. Ward for teaching me copy change flip. We'll just copy change flip. That used to be like three or four points in and of itself. Now it's two. We're going to evaluate that limit. Uh, so all sorts of stuff has to drop out, like way too many of your classmates. What happens to those as n gets really, really large? They are practically equal. And so they drop out. And so your limit is absolute value x over 3. Now, what's the big deal in the ratio test? What do I know will happen? Ryan? Right. If rho, if rho is less than 1, the series converges. And that's true because we treat the series basically geometrically. We basically treat the thing as if it were a geometric series. Michael. Ooh, that's a whole other cancellation game. Uh, so Mike's question is, what if instead of n plus 2 and n plus 1, I was dealing with n plus 2 factorial over n plus 1 factorial? And the question is a great question. n plus 2 factorial is this, right, all the way down to 1. And n plus 1 factorial is this, all the way down to 1. And so everybody kung fu fighting until that guy's left. That's how I always, I always write them out, because I never know how to do it otherwise. <laughs> I'm just not that slick. You, you're trying to generalize. You're trying to see patterns. There are no patterns in math. There are no patterns in math. Solve that thing. Negative 1 is less than that is less than 1. The Algebra 2 team beat that into me because they love me. So th there's the thing. 
We don't know what happens if Rho is 1. We don't know what happens at the end points. So I've got to go back to the original series and ask, what happens if x is 3? What happens to this thing if x is 3? If x is 3, I get 1 third plus 2 thirds plus 3 thirds plus and so on. Tell me about that series, friends. It explodes. If x is negative 3, it's a terrible 3. If x is negative 3, I get 1 third minus 2 thirds plus 3 thirds minus and so on. Tell me about that series. Why does it explode? Don't alternating series converge? Oh, wow, if the folks at home could have heard that, what they would have heard was a cacophony of people telling me, no, 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 the terms have to get smaller and closer to zero. It was very well said. So, sorry, there's your interval of convergence. And that used to be like seven points, and now it's four. Uh, because they want you to do so many other things with it. Um, when you download the PDF that is associated with this, all of the rest of the answers to all of the questions are there. So there. Um, or if you're just watching the video, you just stop it right at that point and you take a picture and then it's there. Oh, goodness sakes. Uh, so the other thing we need to remember, we need to remember all of our favorite Taylor series. Do you remember what e to the x was? No! Gosh, the folks at home didn't hear you say that, I hope. Well, maybe they did. Maybe they heard. But, but there's your e to the x series. There, there are some other series we should remember. We'll do that over here on the other side of the wall. Uh, do you remember sine x? What's the sine x series? Yeah, remember that sine x is an odd function. And since sine x is an odd function, it uses all of the odd powers of x. Makes it easier to remember that cosine x is the derivative of sine x. And so we get all the even powers and their factorials. And those are the three real biggies that you have to know. Have to know them. Because the College Board is going to make you use them. Some of them want to use you. Some of them want to be used by you. Um, you also have to know how to deal with geometric series, but that's a whole other ball game. Geometric series isn't really a memorization, it's using a pattern. I don't know that. It might be. It might be, but I'm running out of time, so I'm going to do this. How do you do e to the negative x over 3? That's what you do. You say, I want to take this, I want to take this job and shove it. Bless you, and your family, and all your pets except for cats. I hate cats. Oh, that's the green. Uh, do you need a general term? Yes. So, uh, let's, and we're not even there yet because we don't have six. How do you multiply through by six? You multiply through by 6. That's exactly how you do it. You just throw a 6 everywhere. Everywhere. You just throw a 6 everywhere. Here is 6. There is 6. Everywhere is 6, 6. Old MacDonald had a farm. Numbers lived on it. Um, so uh, that, that's my quick teach piece on E, V, X, and sine X and cosine X. Um, when you download the PDF that will be attached to this, not only will the full question be there, but also a gap, and then the answer to the question 
will be there. It's going to be question six. It's going to be nasty. And that's our look for today. What comes up tomorrow, I don't even remember.